everything like you said, love, everything is uh, uh, counter entropy. It goes against the way uh, the basic physics of the universe. So maybe actually the atoms really don't like what we're doing. <laughs> they, right. they want us to stop. They've been trying really hard to stop. And despite that, we somehow uh, started this whole bacteria thing for, for like a billion years and now we're here. I actually think of it kind of the other way. I don't think there's any purpose to purposelessness, right? So, so why would anything be <laughs> yeah. here if we, if the drive weren't towards creativity, right? If the drive weren't towards those subatomic particles not being nothingness that blips in and out of existence, right? Like we think is going on in empty space, you know, for light years upon light years, right? But is is there a design, either natural or intentional? for um, a schema, right? A scenario that allows for the incredibly rare but not non-existent eddy pool of counter entropy where good can happen, right? Where creativity can happen, where yeah. ultimately something can grow, something novel can happen. There's no novelty in the vastness of space, even though there's not nothing there. Mm. There's novelty here because I think the the layers of uh, of emergence start stacking very, very, very high when we're in the, a place of counter entropy, which then could provide even thoughts about like good and evil, right? The idea that that creating, that preserving is good, right? It's what we build upon. It's how we get to the eddy pool of counter entropy, right? So then destruction is not good. You know, what what good comes of aggression and destruction, right? It, it, you know, unless we're protecting. We can think of of outline cases, but just think in general concepts, right? Like d destruction destroys. It brings us towards a state of entropy, towards a state of nothingness, whereas uh, goodness, commonality, um, collaboration, right? Nurturing, right? Brings novelty. It brings new existence into the universe. And I think we don't, we don't think about that. The way this, we're in the middle of something so vast and built on top of so many layers. And I think it leads us to be cavalier, you know, with with human life, including often our own. So you think this there's a underlying creative force to the universe that uh, that might even have a kind of built in morality to it, where creating is better than destroying, and then that somehow maps on onto our society, where we kind of try to figure out what that actually means in terms of good and evil. So there, that's some so, something is there like that, but it's like. But it has to be, it's like so nice. It's so perfect because it's rare. It's sufficiently rare where we have our own space. Like you can like close the door and it's like, I need to be alone right now as our human civilization to work on my thing. So it's sufficiently rare that there's not other alien civilizations. They're just like constantly knocking on our door, destroying us. Um, but it still exists. That's weird. Right. Right. It's <laughs> so really fantastically weird. improbable <laughs> yeah. that I think we should be very respectful of it. And I think you said there's a creative force that yeah. values creativity, yes. right? Then so we, well, sure, if it's a creative force, right? It, its existence, its ability to exist and to create comes from something other than entropy, right? Something other than so much dispersion that there's nothingness, right? So, so the creative force will value the sanctity of things, right? You know, keeping things together, not destroying things, right? Building novelty, including novelty of knowledge, novelty of sentience. I mean, it, it fits with the idea that we're not nothing, that that's incredibly improbable, and that there are these many, many layers of emergence that we're standing upon. And I think it tells us something that we're not doing ourselves a service to ignore, right? It's not just a jump to saying, oh, there's a religious answer to everything. It's just, no, it's saying, Science isn't a god either, right? So if we if we if we think of science as a tool and not as an endpoint in and of itself, what is the science telling us? Like I remember showing up at medical school, and it really is true. I mean, I knew so little about the human body. I'd only been in hospitals to visit people. I'd taken pre-med classes, but sort of intensely at once after I didn't take any and I was working in business. I I knew next to nothing. And and I had this idea that was so naive in retrospect that I was going to learn so much, right? I was going to answer these questions because I was going to learn what's going on in the body. What are these organs doing? What are these cells? And what I learned was there was so much more that was amazing. And 
mysterious and seemingly impossible. Like even how a cell functions, right? Like what is going on inside of a cell, the transport mechanisms and energy functions and diffusion functions. And, and then you can go down to smaller levels than that. But when you come back out and you say, well, how all those cells make a kidney? It, yeah. It's not explanatory. You know, I remember asking the OB who had delivered my first child, right? I was so amazed. And I asked him like, what do you think? Like, what do you know? You do this, mm -hmm. right? You, you're, you're seeing this life created. And, you know, and his thought was nothing. Where I just marvel, you know, I, I mean, I get to do this, but I just marvel at it. And I think the more we know about us, the more we respectfully marvel. And we should do that. We should proactively marvel at every aspect, at, at every layer uh, that uh, where the novelty emerges. Yes. We'd be a lot less likely to say, hey, I don't like you because of something, whatever it is, you know, race, religion, culture, sexuality, gender identity, whatever it is, you know, or I want to say, I want rights that you don't have, right? Or I want what you have, right? I mean, there's so much of this. And I understand that it's driven by scarcity and by human insecurity and envy and all of these things that I, that I think drive us towards destruction. But all of that recklessness comes from not having this initial appreciation and respect that you're referring to and just marveling at like, wow, okay, we're here. That's amazing. Let's start with that. 